So these are um, subsea hydrothermal vents. Uh, this is a depth of about two kilometers in the ocean and water has circulated from the ocean down through the seabed where there are volcanic rocks that have uh, a lot of heat in them. The heat is transferred into the water. The water then discharges. It has dissolved a lot of minerals and uh, the subsea discharge rapidly cools and the minerals crystallize into um, these dark or black smokers. Um, what I want to simulate then is a jet of water that's hot and goes into a much larger body of water. Um, and that will be simulating this kind of a uh, jet. We're not going to have this kind of edifice. We'll just assume that the jet is, uh, is injecting into the ocean um, from a flat seafloor. And before we leave this slide, one thing that I would like to point out is that there is indeed uh, an old man of the sea. And you can see him right here in this black smoker. Here's a model that we set up and it's a cylindrical geometry that is really just this uh, cylinder and you can see it's um, a couple meters or about a half meter across and half meter high and we've got a little circle there at the bottom and that will be the uh, the, the jet orifice that's where the water will be coming out and it'll come up into this region this is the sea uh, water that is being um, uh, in that basically interacting with the jet. So to set this up, yeah, let me see the geometry. It's pretty straightforward. We've got a cylinder, and then in order to put that circle in, we have a work plane, and we put the the, the internal circle in with the work plane. So the um, setup really just involves a laminar and a heat transfer um, physics, and we've got an inlet. Here, the way we specify with the um, inflow velocity and outflow that we have coming out the top. The heat transfer is uh, heat transfer in fluids, and we use the water as a material. And we specify the temperature coming in here. And at the outflow, uh, we say all of the temperature is coming out, all the heat is coming out of the top, and we specify the temperature uh, at ambient conditions along the bottom, uh, except right here at this, uh, everywhere except at the center, and then around the edge. And so basically what we're see saying is that the, uh, the jet comes up and either um, hits this boundary, um, and if it if, it, if there's no um, current going crosswise, then it will hit right at the center. Or there may be current that pushes it off to the side, but we're still assuming that all of the heat comes out the top with this boundary condition. If we wanted the heat to come out the sides, well, what, what would happen now is um, it would, the, 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 the plume would go and hit the side and then the, um, you would, you would not have any heat advected out through the sides. Well, actually, let me let me think about that a second. That's not really true. Um, what we're assuming, though, is that yeah, actually, that is true. You're not going to have. You, let me think. Well, essentially, with this kind of boundary condition the temperature at the boundary is kept fixed, so we can't have any heat leaving because the temperature doesn't change. Um, so we could have fluid flow going out, but we would want to change this to an outflow boundary if we wanted flow to, if we wanted heat to be removed from the boundary. Um, the mesh, I just had the, uh, the jet itself meshed a little bit finer, and then this is just a steady state study, and um, it runs in a minute or so, so I've already run it, and we can take a look at some of the results. This is a study that has uh, no cross current, so we can see the, the geometry of the jet, and if we turn off the streamlines, we 
can see a little bit better. So that looks looks pretty reasonable. It's coming out here and then flaring out and then uh, it flares out fairly quickly at first and then uh, a bit less. This is a fairly coarse mesh to try to really resolve what's going on up here, but um, it does a it does a reasonably good job. This is a temperature um, color field, and so what you see is that the the real hot zone is in this region. But once you get up here, even right directly in the path of the jet, the temperature only changes by a, a very modest amount. And then we can use a uh, ISO surface to get a picture of what that temperature field looks like. Um, of a nice columnar field and there's the temperature up at the top and so what I'm going to do now is to put in a cross current and I did that with this function here it's called cross flow and there's the magnitude and what I did with this um, equation is I caused the flow to be um, zero right at the sea floor and then there's a parabolic increase in flow between z equals 0 and z equals 0.1 and that's done right here for z less than 0.1 uh, then uh, the z the profile is parabolic there's the squared term to give you the parabolic profile and then for z greater than 0.1 this is just equal to 1 so the profile looks like this the velocity profile looks like that it curves up and then above 0.1 it's just uh, straight. It's just basically uniform. Okay, so I have that function and then when I come down here to the heat transfer where the velocity is specified, I give it U, V, and W which are the velocity components from laminar flow but I also add in the cross flow. Okay, and so if we do that then we get a different pattern for the heat and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just ran that other study, and before I show you the results, let me show you the results from the convergence plot. The solver that is used is called the segregated solver, and it will solve the pressure and the flow separately, but still have them integrated. Um, you, you get a different curve for each one of the um, variable groups that is solved. And what I wanted to point out is that the, um, the error increases uh, at the beginning of the simulation and then it levels out and then it decreases and it finally converges. So you can get access to this plot by pressing the tab up here. It's called the convergence plot and it's something that is worthwhile checking out because uh, sometimes your simulations will not converge and you can see that because the error will be getting uh, larger but in some cases what happens is they get larger and then uh, they're not converging but then they figure it out and the solver uh, converges after that and ultimately you get, um, get, you get a converged solution and this is an example of that case so if we look at the graphics you can see what happens is we put in a current that goes from uh, left to right here and remember the velocity distribution looks like this and uh, so we can see that, that that right here the jet isn't really affected much by the low velocities down close to the seafloor but then you can see it pushes this uh, low temperature plume off to the right and if we look at that with the ISO surface we can see what the geometry is like a little bit more. Um, 